everyone, and welcome back to Multifamily Live. Super excited today. One of my amazingly good friends, and she is she has taken such huge steps in the real estate industry between retail, between commercial, and everywhere in between. I have the honor of introducing to you Samantha Salem. Welcome to the show, Samantha. Thank you so much for inviting me and for having me. I'm really excited. I'm really excited to have you as well. I'm just, I'm trying to remember, didn't we meet on Clubhouse? We did. We met on Clubhouse back when Clubhouse was like the thing to be a part of. Where you had to be there and you had to be there 24 seven. Oh my goodness. It was like a lifestyle. It was a good, (laughs) it was a good six months for me where that was literally my daily life. It was a good six months and it was completely during COVID and I made some of the best friends and you know what Clubhouse people, if you are listening to this, thank you for putting Clubhouse together because I have such amazing people in my life and it's because of Clubhouse that Samantha is in my life, but this is not a commercial for Clubhouse. This is all about (laughs) Samantha. So Sam, how did you get started and why did you get started in real estate? Okay. So the this is a fun story um back in 2016 2017 i was going through my divorce and about two weeks into moving into my father's basement i started feeling like i needed to do something um i i'm not the type of person that can just sit still and and just sit there and, and now what you know what i mean like it was a very It was a very different transition for me because I was a stay-at-home mom for 12 years and now all of a sudden I'm just sitting here with my three kids and I don't know what to do. So I'm like, I need to, I need to get a job. I need to find out how, a way how to make real money because my hobbies at the time were paying for good stuff. I I was on Etsy and Amazon. I've been an entrepreneur. Um, So it's just, I never pursued it enough for it to actually be full-time career so now I'm like okay now I need a real job but I also know about myself that I don't know how to work for a boss (laughs) so (laughs) I would need to take on charge of my own hands and be have the flexibility that I need my kids were really young at the time so I needed to make sure that I was able to make a decent um, income for myself and still own that flexibility and you know not have to answer to anybody basically I was done answering to anybody at that point <laughs> so I love I, that you fully accepted that about yourself and took those steps forward so give us a breakdown on how you went from making this decision getting into real estate and then take us to your journey to multifamily yeah so my realtor at the time she is amazing so between like the whole entire family, she helped us buy or sell about eight or nine properties. Um, And every single transaction we would have, she would tell me, I need you on my team. You have a good eye for real estate. You know what you're doing. When I'm in a transaction with you, I don't have to do much but show you the houses. You do all the things. Um, And then I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. I have my little kids. I don't think it would work. And my ex wasn't super fond of me working outside of the home anyway, so I had to turn her down every time. So while I was on the couch in that basement that day, her voice was ringing in my head. I need you on my team. I need you on my team. So I was like, oh, wait a minute. Let me call her up. So I called her. She obviously knows the whole entire family. So I tell her the story and she was like, girl, I'm so proud of you. I'm going to send you to my broker and you're going to talk to him. And literally within 30 days, I was fully licensed and I was on her team, which was at the time was the number one team in the Kansas City area. So I went from sitting on the couch to in in no time whatsoever. So that is one of the biggest things I love about you is that you take action. I love it. So keep on going. Yeah. So that year that was in the middle of 2017 is when i got licensed and by the end of that year i had sold 10 houses to people from my community my coi um that were there to support and they saw my whole entire struggle because i'm i'm big on oversharing on social media so that was already going for me well 
and I picked up that following and it just, I transferred it from, from the Etsy, Amazon side of things all the way to the real estate side. And till this day, I have people that remember me from the very beginning days that always come back and be like, I need you to help me with your house or whatnot. So I've been blessed. I've been blessed with the connections and the real, the relationships and, and the community that I have. Um, and I, I don't take that for granted. I really don't. So it just, it just really kind of scaled from there really fast where like year one, half of a year was 10 houses. And then the second year was 30 houses and then the third year was 50 houses. And now it's just like, oh, I guess I'm good at this. <laughs> I think I might be a little good at this. So I started my team and everything and, um, getting, getting into the investing side of things was was interesting and important to me too. So my very first investment property was my marital home. Um, I ended up, instead of selling it and splitting the money half ways, I ended up buying him out. I paid him his half and I kept the property and I rented it out for two years. And I'm so glad I did that because it, because of COVID and everything, when I ended up selling it, it gave me a good chunk of equity that nice. I was like, okay, now I have you know, I have this investment experience. I have this good amount of equity. What do I do with it? And I feel like that was probably one of the first times we had a one-on-one -on -one together because I mm -hmm. had posted a question like, what do you do if you have $100,000 in equity? How would you invest it? And you brought up multifamily as, you know, like you explained it as a crowdfunding type of way of <laughs> invest and stuff like that. Like, at the time, I had no idea what multifamily was. I only knew re residential. I knew that commercial was a different beast and it was super hard. And I probably didn't want anything to do with it because I like residential real estate because of the relationship I have with the client. I get to see them go from no home to dream home. And that's just very fulfilling to me. I feel like commercial is usually buildings and businesses and dollar amounts and there's no connection you know what i mean i'm wrong but that's what i <laughs> i love it because you are not making the case for multifamily right now <laughs> no no I, I was wrong <laughs> the thing is this is where you came from like you came yes. from like a solid residential where you're face to face one-on-one -on -one. what made you do that transition what was it about multifamily? What was it about commercial real estate that you finally realized, okay, maybe this is of the step I need to take in. And for everyone that's listening, Samantha is still a residential broker. She's still a residential agent. She's still doing her, her heart's work. Multifamily is now part of it. So explain yes. that to us. So my very first actual realization of what multifamily was is when I came to multifamily live last year, 2022. Um, I gave you the biggest hug. <laughs> I had no idea what I was walking into. I was like, ah, this is, this is fitting my investment journey that I'm on right now. Um, as of last year, I was managing short term rentals, I had a lot of experience with flips and you know, the Burr method and buying and holding and stuff like that. But everything I was involved in was residential. So mm -hmm. I'm like, Peely doesn't stop talking about multifamily, multifamily, multifamily. I'm like, if she's doing it, and she doesn't stop talking about it, there might be some kind of truth to it. So let me go see for myself. And hey, maybe I'll get to see her in person. So yes, you did give me the biggest hug and I was so happy um, to finally get to see you in person. But for those three days, I was completely mind blown because it was way different than what I had assumed and thought. And also as a residential realtor, the, the connections and the, the way that you um, acquire properties and you reach out to people is all connection and relationship based for the most part. And I was like, oh, so I can do exactly what I do every day, except on a bigger scale. And I get to help people mm -hmm. invest their money if residential wasn't the way they wanted to do it. So I'm like, I, ha I can hit two birds with one stone. I can help people um, invest their money passively 
because we all know residential investing, no matter what, that is very active. Even if you hire mm -hmm. all the people out, that's still active. Um, mm -hmm. I can help my people who have money invest it and they know me and trust me and I would be considered partnering with them instead of trying to sell them a service. And then on the other end, the the acquiring process and just reaching out to sellers and brokers, I'm like, I'll do that all day, every day anyways. It's just a different way of doing it. And now I was intrigued. I was intrigued because I felt like it wasn't as impossible in my head anymore that if I could do what I've done so far, guess what? Let me just roll with this and we'll figure it out on the way. <laughs> That's just how I do things. So yeah, I was I was very happy to, I'm glad I came. I'm, I'm glad I came. I am glad you came too. And I love the fact that you had that aha moment at last year's Multifamily Live and you jumped into Seven Figure Multifamily with us knowing that you got to take what skills you already had, mm -hmm. those skills that you were already nurturing in the residential world and take it to that next level. So I wanna keep on on this thread and I want to know, I want you to tell our audience today, how are you taking it to the next level? I know you're doing meetups, you're huge on social. How are you taking the foundation that you already established as an amazing entrepreneur, an amazing agent who has her own team to now a multifamily syndicator, owner and operator? So one of the things Bef even before multifamily live, one of the things that was really important to me um, was making sure that all people knew that they could be investors, all of them. And if I could be an investor as a single mother at the time with kids to raise and a roof to, you know, we need to keep the roof on our heads, um, you can do it too. And it really truly doesn't take as much money as it takes mindset. So I was already, um, the, <clears throat> the people that I was surrounding myself with were people that were just as like-minded, that were into investing and were doing it, dabbling into it and liking it. And we knew, okay, this is the way we want to go, but we don't just want to go alone. We want to take all of these people with us um, mm -hmm. because we do things better when we're together. It, we grow faster. It, it's just, I just, that's how I work. So um, mm -hmm. there were little tidbits of we need to put together an event or we need to put together a meetup or a mastermind or something because it's easier for me to learn from somebody who I feel like is my equal or my like one step ahead of me than it is to look up to all of these gurus that are all over the internet that are millions and billions of dollars in. I'm like, I can't reach that level. It's too high for me. But if it's someone that's my peer or has been there a couple of years before me, that's easier to swallow. So mm -hmm. I couldn't find that too much at the time. I had to like plow my way in my path through this. So I was like, let me take these people with me. If they will have me, if they will listen to me and trust me, I would love to take everybody with me on this journey. So um, I came to Multifamily Live and then you guys were really big on networking and reaching out and connections and stuff like that. And it prompted in my head, why don't, it would be so much easier if I can share the knowledge that I have with everybody one time, so I don't have to share every single person and repeat myself for two hours every single time. And then my peers and I, we were like, why don't we just start a quick meetup, like a little event or something? So I'm like, okay. And then I can talk about one thing and you can talk about one thing and you can talk about one thing because we're all like experienced in very specific places and that'll give us credibility and we all have our circles and we'll bring all of our circles together. If every person brought 10 people, we would have 200 people. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why don't we just do that? So we did that. I, <laughs> I love it. And that was, what's the meetup called for anyone that is in the Kansas City area? So it's called Invest KC. Um, mm -hmm. I ended up taking ownership of it because I was the one that was telling everybody what to do and where to go and all that stuff. It was just easier at the end for me to end up owning it awesome. um, and <laughs> we are two events in 
every single event is better than the last and our next one is actually in a couple months too and it will be an annual event moving forward but basically what we decided it to be was that everybody's welcome if you've never had a real estate transaction in your life you're welcome and if you have hundreds of doors under your belt you're welcome because we want this to be a space that is easily accessible and affordable that you can come and learn every single aspect of investing and find which one you like the most and this includes residential and commercial and flipping and, and multifamily and all of the things we find you the connections and the lenders and the vendors and everybody for you to literally all you have to do is say i'm ready and let's go like you have no excuses after that we are giving and sharing all of our resources freely because we want you to just take it and run with it I love it. You mentioned one word, and we've had discussions on this this word a few times, whether it was on Clubhouse or in person. And the word is accessibility. Mm-hmm. And I love that you like pointed that out. Can you talk a little bit about why it's so important to make sure that our events are accessible, that they're that anyone can come to them? Mm -hmm. That no matter who you are, whether or not you're a single mother of three children, or you don't think you can, but you want to, or regardless of color, race, Mm -hmm. creed, why is it important for your, for yours in particular, your meetup to be accessible and for you to be accessible? That's my mission. That's, that's the whole goal of it. And the mission of it was to create generational wealth especially in the the minorities that don't think it's attainable. Let's just say it the way it is. Um, Mm -hmm. The uh, representation, diversity, culture, all of the things that make America as great as as it is, is because of all of our different backgrounds and cultures and whatnot. And if you go and ask a regular, um, nine to five worker, hey, would you like to invest in real estate? Their first thought is, I need to be a millionaire to do that. And I can't. I was like, ah, no, it would be nice if you were a millionaire, but we can get you there. If you just come and learn these, these really small tips and tricks of how we got there, we're not millionaires, I'm nowhere near a millionaire. But I have enough knowledge that, you know, if you put action, you will take yourself to that journey if that is where you want to be. Um, so like the freedom, the freedom part of life is what we're trying to share with others that you can reach financial freedom or time freedom or geographical freedom or whatever you want to call it. And it does not have to equal a lot of dollar signs. It's just it's different for everybody. And what's your goal? What do you want to do? How much money do you need to be able to just sit back and relax and not freak out if you didn't go to work the next day? Or what dollar amount do you need for you not to even worry about if you can make your bills this month or if you should go splurge on this one item for them? You know what I mean? Like it could be different for everybody. How many kids do you have? How many people are dependent on you? So if we can share that message of it's really not as hard as you think and just please come join us, then I would have done my job basically. And we're, we're trying to help as many people as possible reach that freedom point. So accessibility is extremely important because people literally have no idea. They don't teach this in school. So we have to. I love the fact that you, you live and you portray and you, you exemplify your mission every single day. So the other thing, the other reason why I wanted Samantha to come on Multifamily Live podcast today is because she's also one of our speakers and she will be talking about a lot of the topics that we touched on today. So if you haven't gotten your Multifamily Live ticket yet, please do. It's going to be an amazing time, especially if you are listening to this and you're telling yourself, I can't because dot, 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 let us help you try and figure out what your story, what your can, can be with at, within the real estate world. And it might not be multifamily, but multifamily live is a journey that you'll be able to take with 
entrepreneurs like Samantha, like myself, like Jason and Chad and Bill. So Samantha, before I let you go today, what is, do you have anything else that you want to share with the audience? Something that's near and dear to your heart or something that's happening for you in the, in the very near future? Well, one of the good things that is happening is that because we created Invest KC, um, we found our first deal through partners who reached out to us to partner as general partners on their deal. And we will be closing on the 19th. So this Thursday or Friday, I can't tell time. But um, had we not created Invest KC, I don't think we would be a part of that. We established credibility. We established that we have the experience and the knowledge that it takes to take on a multifamily building. It's 50 units here in Kansas City. And I am really excited about this project because a lot of it has, um, it has a proponent of short-term rentals, which I am good at managing. So short-term rental queen. To us for the asset management part of things. And being in the process as a partner buyer um, has expedited my learning journey with multifamily because the courses are amazing and great and you can listen and hear all of the things that people are doing. But for me, I'm an action taker. I learn by doing. So I was like, oh, that's what they mean by so-and-so going on. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is hard. Like, I didn't know it was going to be this hard, but now I have that experience and it'll be way easier. I feel like moving forward. That first one is always the hardest, but moving forward, now I know what to expect. Now I know, you know, all of the things by experience and not just by learning. So I thought that was really incredible, but just, I would say, just do it. If you have an idea, just take action and just do it. Um, it freaked me out speaking in front of all of those people. Our very first Invest KC, we had 130 people show up and mm -hmm. we took, it took us 35 days to put it together. Like I left multifamily in June, early July, we had the idea, August 11th, we went live. So it was crazy. It was crazy, but it gave me the best rush because we did it and it worked. And we have all these people, half of them, we didn't know who they were join us because they saw value in what we had to share which proved my point mm -hmm. and all i did was put together panels of people from different backgrounds and a lot of them are from our seven figure multifamily group too so it's just how can i keep on serving them how can i keep on sharing you know the investment journey with them and how do we end up just growing this together so it'll be fun Thank you so much, Samantha. I love that you have held on to this theme of doing something together, of taking action, and just having strength within yourself to move and take those steps forward that you know that you need to take. So, Samantha, thank you so much. If anyone that's listening to this wants to get a hold of you, how can they? Um, you can Google my name. Maybe that's sufficient. No, just kidding. Um, I have on Instagram, my business account. I don't know which one to give you. I have so many. My main business account is uh, Kansas City Lifestyle on Instagram. Mm -hmm. My personal account that talks more about travel than anything, because, you know, freedom, is travel like a Sag. It's like short for Sagittarius because I take that on fully. Um, on Facebook, I'm just as Samantha Salem, so you can find me, friend me, feel free. Our um, a syndication company that we started is called Another Comma, so you can find us on Instagram as well, Another Comma LLC, because we aim to add another comma to your assets. <laughs> I love it. So you heard it. Any of those links will be down below. We'll also try and find a website for you to make it easy. And thank you so much, Samantha. It's been a pleasure to have you on. You. And for everyone else out there, have a day filled with aloha. So much love, so much peace, so much profitability. And I'll see you at Multifamily Live. Aloha. Yeah, I'll see you too. <laughs>